Okay, just going to do a video refuting this uh, lying Satanist here, Jesse Morrell. Done some stuff on him in the past, but he is a work salvationist. He does not believe that the atonement of Jesus Christ pays for your sins. I mean, he'll say, well, I do believe that, but he basically believes you have to work your way to heaven. He believes that basically you have to cleanse yourself of sin by turning from sin. He says in this video that, you know, sin is not forgiven unless you turn from it. So in other words, it's not Jesus Christ paying for your sins, it's you having to pay for your own sins by turning from it. That's what it comes down to. It's work salvation. He's trying to earn his own way to heaven by his holiness and his righteousness instead of trusting in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He's self-righteous. Like most of these, you know, I call them straight papists because they are teaching Catholic doctrine. This lines up perfectly with the Catholic Church and it lines up with Calvinism too. Because one of the biggest lies that conditional security heretics will say is that eternal security comes from Calvinism. It's not true at all. In fact, if you actually read up on Calvinism, Calvinism actually lines up with conditional security. The perseverance of the saints is not uh, eternal security. Perseverance of the saints is actually work salvation. Uh, I actually did some research on it and shocked to realize that perseverance of the saints, because I actually did believe at one point that Calvinists did teach eternal security. I actually believe that. And I would just say, well, I would just say to them, you know, that's something they got right. But after doing some research, uh, Calvinists actually believe the exact same thing that Jesse Morrell does, that you have to persevere and endure to the end to be saved. And you're going to see here that he's just teaching a flat out workspace salvation. He's twisting scripture. And repentance, let me just say this, repentance is God to serve your sins. God, repentance is you have God to serve your sins and that works repentance to salvation. Like the thief on the cross in Luke chapter 18. No, not the thief on the cross, sorry. I was referring to the uh, the publican and the thief on the cross. It's obviously it's sorrow too. But the publican in Luke 18 uh, had godly sorrow. He said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. So that's godly sorrow. So repentance from sin is not you having to, to be sinlessly perfect and enduring in a sinless state or else you're not saved. That's heresy. That's Roman Catholicism. It's not biblical salvation. It's not biblical repentance. Biblical repentance is also not the, you know, what would be called easy believism type thing of where it's just simply, you know, unbelief to belief. No, repentance is God to serve for your sins. You can see 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 8 to 11 about that. But you're going to see here, he, he's, he's self-righteous. He's a work salvationist. He's a papist. That's all he is. Well, also, too, it's also worth noting he's monetized as well. When I clicked on this video, there was an ad. So, taking money from Google, which is already a big problem. And then another doctrine that's sin friendly and a accomplice of sin, uh, which makes people comfortable in their sin, is just once saved, always saved. And, and that's one of the worst. And there's different degrees and variations of this doctrine. But it essentially says if you ever had a moment of faith, then you're saved once and for all, uh, even if you backslide and, and you start... Uh, some people say even if you become a Muslim or a Hindu, that if you ever had a moment of faith in Christ, you're still saved. Um, I've, I've never heard anyone say that. Even the easy believers and people that teach uh, eternal security, I've never even heard them, them say that. So um, I'm calling him out. I think he's lying about that, quite frankly, because I've never heard anyone say that. Uh, what, the, what the Bible teaches is that if they, you know, if they become an atheist or a Buddhist or a Hindu, they were probably not saved to begin with. They didn't have that supernatural rebirth. That's what it comes down to. But according to this guy, you're having to basically cleanse yourself of sin, so um, ridiculous. But the Bible teaches that we can fall away from the faith. Paul says that uh, he uh, would you know, keep his body under subjection, at least after he's preached to others, he himself. Okay, something you gotta watch out for too is they won't actually give you the chapter and verse. They'll just say, oh, Paul said this, Bible says this. Um, they won't actually give you the scripture and the chapter and verse. And it's kind of a problem because uh, you're gonna see why he won't do that because reading the context, he rips, I'm getting ahead of myself, but he rips scripture out of context. So that's why you have to actually look in the scriptures to the verses he's going to because I'm going to show you that he's ripping the verse out of context. I'm getting ahead of myself, but let's continue. Elf become a castaway. And the Bible says that the Jews were... Rewind that. Talks about being castaway. Here's the verse he rips out of context, which, again, the importance of actually turning in the scriptures so you can read the context. Uh, would, you know, keep his body under subjection, at least after he's preached to others. He himself become a castaway. Okay, here's one of the scriptures they love ripping out of context. So this is why, again, it's important to tell the people, turn your Bibles to here, you know, turn your Bible to 
chapter and verse. Because these conditional security heretics always rip scripture out of context to prove their doctrine. So the verse they ripped out of context, the verse he was quoting, was 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. And if you actually read it in context, when Paul talks about being a castaway, he's saying you can live according to the sinful flesh and basically you ruin your life and just wreck your life. Uh, you can lose spiritual joy, you can lose your rewards in heaven, you can lose happiness because God will chasten you. You can lose rewards, I mentioned at the judgment seat of Christ. You could even lose your life if you get too far into sin. However, you don't lose your salvation. So when Paul's saying he becomes a castaway, he's just saying you can wreck your life and just, you know, for, through sin. But you don't lose your salvation. This verse, in context, has nothing to do with someone losing their salvation. Every verse these people do, they always rip out of context. They'll, they'll, and they'll go back to the Old Testament, they'll go back to, or they'll go to the verses in the Revelation that are for future events. You know, and verses in the Pauline epistles, they have the rip out of context. So yeah, the context is not about someone losing his salvation. Uh, Paul wasn't saying, oh, I, I might have lost my salvation. Paul was saying you can get messed up with the flesh and wreck your life. And then you, you, you become a castaway. That's what he's saying in context. But they don't ever read context. And the Bible says that the Jews were cut off and we were grafted in, but let's not be haughty in fear. At least we also be cut off, the Bible says. Okay. Also another scripture they love twisting. Romans chapter 11, the, the one he was quoting was Romans chapter 11, verses 21 to 22, which talks about being cut off. And again, context is not talking about someone sinning and then losing their salvation. Context is, is someone going against Israel and being nationally cut off. Uh, I have in my notes here, the context of this verse is talking about someone who goes against the Jews. It's not talking about salvation. So when, when it says cut off, I believe it's talking someone is nationally being, like a nation being cut off. It's not talking about someone being cut off because of sinning and losing their salvation. Again, totally twisting the scripture and won't telling, not telling the viewers to look in the Bibles to this verse, look in the Bibles to that verse, because they would sh it would show what the verse is talking about. They, al they always do this. Jesus said, he that perseveres unto the end shall be saved. So the idea that, well, if you... Perseveres, yeah, yeah, that was in, he's quoting Matthew 24, 13. Uh, it says endure to the end. That verse is dispensationally for the time of Jacob's trouble. Which, again, a lot of these street preachers are not, they're non-dispensational. Like, they make a mess of scripture. They think the whole Bible is written for Christians today. Now, the whole Bible is obviously good for instruction and righteousness. But in terms of doctrine for today, in terms of salvation for today, it doesn't work. Matthew 24, 13 is dispensationally for people, for Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why you have to rightly divide the word of truth in 2 Timothy 2, 15. But they don't ever do that. You're, you know, once you're converted, that's it. It's a done deal. No matter what you do or how you live, you're once saved, always saved. Uh, no, it, notice that. No matter what you do or how you live, you're still saved. What is he saying? Salvation is by what you do, not what Christ did. And he'll say, well, it's by Jesus Christ. You see how he's adding works. He's saying, see what you do, how you live. So the salvation, salvation is dependent on how you live and what you do. Works salvation. That's what it is. It's works. He's preaching works salvation. He's preaching salvation by your own righteousness, not about what Jesus Christ did. It's about how you, what you have to do. It's Roman Catholicism. It's works salvation. It's, it's just contrary to many explicit passages in the Bible. In fact, it would be contrary to God's goodness. Uh, the idea of... I gotta love that. He, always, he says that a lot. Oh, it's contrary to God's goodness. No, something contrary to God's goodness would be making you have to earn salvation by your own righteousness making you this Roman Catholic workspace uh, salvation via your own self-righteousness. And not surprisingly, he rejects the imputed righteousness and he rejects the substitutionary atonement and he rejects the biblical doctrine that Jesus Christ paid for all your sins, past, present, and future. He's a papist. He is a, just a closeted Roman Catholic. This is exactly what the Catholics believe. A lot of these street papists do this. They, they basically believe Roman Catholicism without the whole Mary idolatry and that kind of stuff. You know, Crazy. What a heretic. Of a once saved, always saved is essentially a license to sin. And if God gave anyone a license to sin, that would be uh, contrary to the well-being of his whole universe. If, if a no, no one's saying it's a license to sin. If you do sin, you will get chastened by God, obviously. You know, uh, you do get chastened by God if you sin. However, he doesn't take away your salvation. Because if he could take away your salvation by how you live, that would mean that you're working your way to heaven because it's depending on how, what you do and your righteousness, not about what Jesus Christ did.
if a, if a, if a ruler pardoned a criminal and said, I'm forgiving you for all your crimes, past, present, and future, and no matter what you do after this point, you can never again go to jail, and you can live in the community however you want to live, no matter what you do, you're forgiven. No community would want that. No community would be safe. Uh, no one could trust the intelligence or the goodness of a ruler like that. And so God, in His goodness, and God, in His intelligence, doesn't give anyone a license to sin. Well, I, I agree. The grace of God shouldn't be used as a license to commit sin and wickedness. But you're not doing it to earn your salvation. See, he, here's what he's saying. He's saying the grace of God is not a license to sin. Amen. I agree with that. But then you have to basically maintain this holy lifestyle to basically earn your salvation, which is heresy. It's Catholic. Roman Catholicism. Sin, in order to be forgiven, must always be forsaken. Now, look, look at that. Remember one that. Because he just proved he's a work salvationist. That he doesn't believe the blood of Jesus Christ pays for all your sins. That sin, in order to be forgiven, must always be forsaken. So, sin, in order to be forgiven, must be forsaken by you. Um, so, then why did Jesus Christ even come and die on the cross then? To pay for sins. If it's depending on, it's if, if it's totally dependent, well, maybe not totally, he'll, he'll probably backtrack and, you know. But, if it's dependent on you having to turn from sin, uh, then what was the point of Jesus Christ dying on the cross? You see that they're nullifying the blood of Jesus Christ. They're making it, basically they're nullifying it. They're making it non-effective. In fact, let me show you a scripture on that. Galatians. And here's a scripture they also love twisting and, and trying to prove their heresy, their Roman Catholic doctrine. Galatians chapter 5, verses 1-4. Said fast, therefore, and the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Be behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. What's he saying here? He's talking about, you know, going back under the law, and how if, it's, if you're doing that, then Christ is of no effect unto you. Verse 3, For I testify to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. And here's a scripture they love twisting to say you can lose your salvation, and I'm going to show you how it's actually teaching the opposite, and it's actually condemning the Catholic Calvinist heresy of conditional security. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. And they'll say, see, you're fallen from grace. Um, what's the context? See, they, they never read context. Context is Paul is actually condemning people who are trying to go back under the law and trying to earn their salvation based on keeping the law, which is exactly what these street preachers are doing. He's saying Christ has become of no effect unto you because if you're trying to go back under the law, then Christ died in vain. So that's why he's saying you're fallen from grace. He's not saying you've fallen from grace as in you've lost your salvation because you sinned. That's not the context at all. He's saying that if you're if you're going to go back under the law, then you know Jesus Christ basically died for nothing and he's of no effect unto you. That's what he's saying when he's saying you've fallen from grace. You're no longer under grace. You're back under the law. Good scripture that, that ties into this. Galatians 2.21 I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law then Christ is dead in vain. So if you're trying to justify yourself by the law which is what the street preachers are doing these Catholic street preachers then Christ died in vain. He died for no reason. So if you're trying to save yourself by your own righteousness and your holiness then what did Christ die for? He died for nothing. You, you basically just you know he, you're, they're nullifying the blood of Jesus Christ they're making it null and void. But here's some scriptures that prove eternal security. I have some notes here. But eternal security is a biblical doctrine. It's not Calvinist. In fact, Calvinism uh, denies eternal security. Calvinism teaches conditional security that, that you're preserved if you have to endure you have to endure in holiness and then you're preserved. That's what Calvinism teaches. Um, so Calvinism is not uh, does not teach eternal security. That's a common lie. Calvinism lines up more with with the conditional security as I shown in one of my blog posts but yeah so conditional security is Catholicism and it is Calvinism too but here's some scriptures that prove that you are in fact eternally secure and that you cannot lose your salvation 1st Corinthians chapter 1 I think it's verse I can't remember it's verse 6 or 7 or not 1st not Corinthians chapter 3 sorry 1st Corinthians chapter 1 verses 6 Actually, I'll start at verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're waiting for Jesus Christ, not the Antichrist. 
good kick at the whole post-trip heresy, who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're confirmed to the end, and he confirms you. You don't confirm yourself. He confirms you. It goes back to this thing. Eternal security is not um, a license to sin. It's simply you get sa it's basically God who saves you. Jesus Christ pays for your sins. You don't pay for your own sins by your holiness. It's Jesus Christ who saves you. You don't earn your own salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. Uh, now he which established, establisheth us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us, is God, who hath also sealed us, and given us the earnest, or given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. What does it mean to be sealed? Sealed up. You know, when we seal up a letter, it's closed. It's sealed up. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. He's given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Compare that with Ephesians 1.13. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And of course, you've got these conditional security devils who say, well, you can become unsealed. Okay. If that was the case, that means that these conditional security devils who say we can be, we can be unsealed, you can unseal yourself by living in sin, they apparently think they're more powerful than God and they're more uh, they're better than God apparently. Because let me show you something. John chapter 10, verse 28 to 29. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So, no man can pluck you out of God's hand, and Jesus says, I give unto you eternal life, and you will never perish. But apparently, you can pluck yourself out of God's hand, and you can basically take, you can basically can take away the gift that Jesus Christ gave you, and you can make yourself perish. Um, so apparently, they, you're better than God, apparently. Because you can pluck yourself out of God's hand, and you can perish, even though Jesus Christ says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. He doesn't say, they'll never perish if they continue in holiness. He just says, they'll never perish. And it's, it's Jesus Christ who gives you eternal life. You don't give yourself eternal life by enduring to the end and that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's a heresy. It's false doctrines. It's wicked. John chapter 6, verse 39. Another good passage proving eternal security. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all of that all that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. So again, Jesus Christ gives you eternal life, you will never perish. He won't lose you. He'll lose nothing. That simple. You know, totally. And think about eternal security is that it destroys self-righteousness. Because eternal security heretics, they're always self-righteous. They're trying to earn their own salvation. Well, if Jesus Christ saved you and if he keeps you saved by his power, not your own, then you can't really be self-righteous at that point. So they have to, they can't, they can't let go of their self-righteousness. They can't let go of their pride. John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You know, you're not going to come into condemnation. You'll never perish. But so we can become unsealed, then we're apparently more powerful than God, because we can make ourselves perish, even though he says we'll never perish. Ridiculous. They're the ones who are nullifying the blood of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1.13 in whom you also trusted, let me just scroll down, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believe you are sealed, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed. And and here's here's another scripture they love twisting. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 to, I believe it's 13. Here's a scripture they love twisting as well to uh, prove their Catholic Calvinist heresy of conditional security. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And they'll stop right there. They'll say, see, you know, if we deny Jesus Christ, he'll deny us. Um, read the very next verse. First, 2 Timothy 2.13. If we believe not yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Once you are saved, once you are part of Christ's body, if he denies you, he'd be denying himself. Because you're part of his body. He'd be deni If he denies his own body, a member of his own body, he's denying himself. He cannot deny himself once you're part of his body. Because you're, once you're part of his body, denying you would be denying himself. So it's funny how they always love ripping scripture out of context. But it's clear, once you're a member, once you're a member of the body of Christ, you can't be denied. Because denying you would be denying himself. Uh, where's the other scripture? I'm trying to think of. Here's actually another good scripture that really makes a problem for them. Second Peter, or sorry, First Peter, chapter one, verses three to five. 
is not a good one to use against them. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, his abundant mercy, not our own, not our own righteousness, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Look at the verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. You're kept by the power of God. And they'll say, see, what's by faith? No, it's the faith that leads you to be kept by the power of God. Once you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're kept by the power of God. You don't have to continually have the faith to be kept by the power of God. They'll twist that scripture too. But you're kept by the power of God. You reserve, It's reserved in heaven for you. It doesn't fade away. It's that simple. And, and there's so many scriptures I can go to that just destroy this Catholic Calvinist heresy of conditional security. It is a wicked heresy. It produces self-righteousness. So don't be deceived by the little uh, works righteous papal devils like this guy right here, this Jesse Morrell, and other works salvation, conditional security devils, and Calvinists like him. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.